All right, guys, I'm so excited to be with you this morning. I'm a morning person, so I'm sorry if I'm waking you guys up here a little bit. But guys, it's, I'm so happy to be with you again. It's so good to see all your faces. Uh, it's so good to be here to share the love of God with all of you. And um, like I said, guys, our theme is our living hope in Jesus. And I kind of want to do something that we did at camp last summer, all right? I want you guys to all get loud in your, in your living rooms, in your bedrooms, wherever you may be at watching this, guys. I want you to get loud as I do this. When I say Jesus, you say Christ, okay? So when I say Jesus, I want all of you to say Christ. You ready? Raise your hand in the air. Tell me if you're ready. Let me know. Are you ready? Okay. When I say Jesus, you say Christ. Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Christ. Christ. Amen. So, guys, I'm so excited to be here with you here this morning. I'm so excited to be able to tell you more about uh, how Jesus gave me so much hope. He gave me a living hope. There's no hope in anything else but Jesus, guys. And I'm just so thrilled this morning uh, to be able to share with you my story, to be able to share with you um, how Jesus changed my life, how he transformed me. And um, so this morning, for the first session that I have with you guys, I want to share with you my testimony again. I know I shared it with you last year. And... Um, I know we're going through a tough time right now with, with this pandemic. It's, it's not easy. I know a lot of us are feeling a little anxious and nervous and sometimes even scared. But I want you guys to know something this morning. There's no reason to fear because Jesus is Lord. And uh, I'm so excited to share with you this morning the gospel. So what is the gospel? The word gospel means good news. And I want to share with you how I heard the gospel for the first time. So you see on the screen there. Our, our theme for this week, for these next couple of days, and I think, and Rob did an excellent job opening us up yesterday and just sharing with us more about how we have so much hope in Jesus. But the theme for this week is going to be our living hope in Jesus. Our living hope. I want you to say that to the person next to you. Say, our living hope in Jesus. Say it to the person next to you. All right? I want you to say it now to the person our on the other side. Our Jesus. living hope is in Jesus. Say it to everyone in your room. Our living hope is in Jesus. Okay? So, uh, so make sure you think about that constantly. All right. So we can go to our next slide. So I'm going to be sharing my story, my hope and uh, how Jesus is my hope. And uh, I want to, I'm so excited to do that with you this morning. And so before I do that, I want to share a little bit about myself. I don't know if some of you uh, went to uh, camp last, last summer, maybe some of you didn't. And I want to just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Diego Mendieta. I live here in Tom's river, New Jersey. And, uh, but I didn't live in New Jersey my whole life. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide, Hazel. I was born in La Paz, Bolivia. To give you some fun facts, I know Brother Rob gave us some really great facts yesterday about the Word of God and Scripture. But some fun facts about myself is that I was born in La Paz, Bolivia. And guess what? La Paz, Bolivia is the highest city in the world. It's up in the mountains, the Andy Mountains. I was born there. And then at the age of about one and a half years old, I traveled, guess where? You see there? You see that picture there? The great garden state of New Jersey. <laughs> so I traveled to New Jersey and um, that's where my family and I have been living this whole time. And, um, and so now I'm, uh, I live in Tom's River, New Jersey. And, and this is where really my story starts to begin. This journey of, uh, of learning more about Christ, uh, learning more about Jesus. And so I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, church really wasn't important for my family and I. We went once a year, maybe twice a year. It wasn't really something that was on our priority list. And uh, so I really didn't understand who God was. I really didn't, under I really didn't understand who, what Jesus did on the cross for me. I remember going to this church, and I remember seeing Jesus on this big cross as I walked into the church, and I didn't know why he was there. I didn't understand that. And so this morning, I want to explain to you why our Savior did that, why he went to that cross for us. But let's continue on to the next slide. So I want to share with you guys what my life was like before I knew Jesus what my life was like before I knew him. Guys, I was so unsatisfied. I was so broken. You see the guy there in the picture with his hands over his face? I was hopeless. See, I didn't have the living hope before. And I was hopeless, guys. I was hopeless. I was lost. You see the other, you see the other caption there? I was lost. And then at the bottom left corner, you'll see a person confused. I was confused. I was empty. I was unsatisfied. I was lost. And I was also so angry at life. I was a very angry young kid, and I just uh, was so upset that at one point, guys, I'm going to tell you something real serious. At one point, I decided to become kind of like an atheist. I'm not sure if you know what that word atheist means, but it means as someone who doesn't believe in any type of God or doesn't believe in God. And so that was my heart. I was 
going back and forth between being an atheist back to agnostic. One moment I didn't believe in God. And one moment I said, you know what, maybe there is a higher power. Maybe there is someone out there. And I kind of, you know, messed around with that a little bit as I thought about that. But my life before Jesus, guys, was so empty. It was so hopeless. It was so confusing. I was lost. I was empty. And so, guys, I, I was, man, I was really searching for things. And I thought that I can find my satisfaction in friends. And I found out that that didn't happen. That wasn't successful at all. All my friends turned their back on me. Uh, a lot of them weren't faithful to me. And, I, you know, I just felt so lost, guys. I felt so hopeless. So one day, my dad um, went to Bolivia, and he heard about Jesus Christ and the gospel, and he gave his life to the Lord. And my dad came back a whole different person. I saw a whole different father come back to my house in New Jersey. And um, my family started following Christ. They started going to another church um, called Fifth Avenue Chapel in Belmar, New Jersey. They started coming to this church, and my dad, I just saw something so different in his life. He was satisfied. He didn't look lost anymore. He wasn't empty anymore. He wasn't angry anymore. He, had, he, 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 is this, he was flourishing with the living hope of Jesus in his life. He wasn't confused anymore. He was just so excited. He was joyful. And I'm like, man, what is going on with my dad? He's a different person. And so one day, my dad was inviting me to church. He wanted us to go to this church that we just started going to. And I'm like, Dad, I don't want to know about church. Church is boring. Church is there's nothing fun there. I don't want to go there, Dad. Like, why are you making me go to this place I don't even want to be at? And I just remember my dad looking so heartbroken to see that his son didn't want to go to church. And, um, and so my dad continued to love me. My dad continued to have patience with me. And so, um, and then one day, out of, and you know, and as months went by, they started going to church. And every Sunday, they would ask me to go. I would go. I'd be like, oh, my word. What am I doing here? And, um, and then one day, we went home after church. And my dad says, son, you know, I, I got some, some good news for you. And you can go to the next slide, Hazel. I got some good news for you. There's this soccer camp at Cutstown University, and I want you to go. I want you to go. We'll, we'll take care of all the expenses. You'll be away from home for a week. You're going to have a blast. And guys, I know we're, we're, we're doing soccer camp right now. And you know what my favorite sport is? It's soccer. I love soccer. I've grown up my whole life playing soccer. You know, from Bolivia, that's the most popular sport in Bolivia. As a matter of fact, soccer is the most popular sport in the world. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I was so excited to play soccer. You know, what, you know what I first started thinking, guys? You know what I started thinking about? I started saying to myself, wow, you know what this means? I get a break from my Jesus freak family. I get a break from this fanatical Jesus loving family. I get to, yes, I get a break from them. I'm so excited. I get to, you know, I get to go uh, to this camp. I get to make new friends. I don't have to hear about God anymore. Oh my goodness. This is a nice break. I was so excited guys. So you know what? Um, my mom drove me on, we, we started driving out to Custown, Pennsylvania. Man, I was driving, we were driving out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. We drove down the street and guess what I saw guys. I saw this Amish family driving this huge wagon down the road. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Where, did we go to another country? Where, where are we? I never saw this before. And so we were driving out in the middle of nowhere. We pull up to the building where I was supposed to register. And, you know, I have a Latina mom. For all you Latinos out there, you know how attached Latina moms are to their sons, okay? If they leave them somewhere just for a couple of hours, they're crying. All right, that's the kind of mom I have. Every time my mom left me somewhere, she would weep. She would just cry. Oh, my God, hijito. Te voy a traer, Oh, I'm going to miss you. Oh, you know, she, you know, she would just, you know, cry and make a huge. I'm like, Mom, I'm only going to be away from home for four hours. Don't cry. That's the kind of mom I have, right? She's just very, uh, very emotional, very, uh, you know, very attached to us. But you know what, guys? Something happened different this time. When she dropped me off at this camp, completely dry face, no tears at all. She pulled up to this building with my dad. She dropped me off and she pulled off. Can you believe that? They just pulled off on me. They're like, okay, we'll see you later. Have a great time at soccer camp. We'll see you later. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. She didn't even cry. She didn't even, she didn't even hug me. She just like, she just bounced. She just left. I'm like, what's going on here? And she, and she was gone. They, and like I said, guys, I'm in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. It's out in the boonies. Nobody's around. It's just this university in the middle of this area where there's very, very rural area where there's like 
cows and stuff like that around. So, so mind you, I, I have no way to, to escape this place. So like my parents dropped me off and I'm like, yeah, now it's time for real fun and, and you know, a good time to, to enjoy myself. I don't have to worry about going to church. I don't have to worry about hearing about God. This is great. So I walk into the registration room. I walk into this huge gymnasium. Okay. I look to my left and I see all these t-shirts there. I'm like, oh, great. I get a free t-shirt. And then I see these books and I'm like, uh, I have no idea why books are, are piling up on this table here. I have no idea why. I, I thought to myself, maybe it's a soccer manual on how to, you know, improve my soccer skills. That's what I thought. I said, okay. So I didn't pay, I didn't pay much attention to it, you know? So I started walking up to the registration table. And so I start talking to the lady there. Mind you, she has this huge smile on her face. I met this guy who's a wrestler. He gave me this huge hug. I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? He looks so happy. What is going on with these folks? Oh, everyone's smiling. Everyone's excited. Everyone's happy. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, this is so weird. <laughs> so, uh, so I walk up to the lady. I'm like, hey, my name is Diego. I'm here to register for camp soccer camp so um and she's like okay great so i did all my paperwork signed everything um and then she's like okay great you see those shirts over there and i was like yeah i want i want a free free i'm thinking in my mind yeah i want a free t-shirt yeah, feel free to grab a t-shirt i'm like great and then she's like you see those books over there i'm like yeah i see those books you see those books well those are those are bibles for fca that we give to all our campers and i said what I said, what'd you say? Bibles. Are you kidding me? What do you mean Bibles? This is soccer camp. What are you talking about? What do you mean Bibles? Why would there be Bibles A soccer camp? She goes, well, you know, we can go to the next slide, Hazel. Well, you know what? This is FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA. And I'm like, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Like, what do you mean? She goes, yeah, you see, you see the picture down there next to the slogan for FCA? There was that Bible that I got. God's game plan, game ready, and the, the game of this Bible. And I'm like, what is going on? And it doesn't get better. At that point, I look at my schedule, and it says quiet time in the morning. I'm like, what in the world is quiet time? We sit there. We don't talk. What is that? And I ask somebody, what does quiet time mean? She goes, oh, you know, in our huddle groups, we talk about, you know, God's love and, and the word of God, and we just reflect on, on what we learn each, each day throughout the week. And I'm like, what is going on? I said, when do we play soccer? And she's like, well, there's three sessions that we get to play. I'm like, oh. All right, but what is this? So I remember walking to my room, just feeling so upset, feeling so angry, feeling so, and now I understood why my mom drove off. Now I understood why she, my dad, and they were like ready to fly off back, back to New Jersey. And I'm like, man, now it all makes sense. Now it all makes sense. And, um, and so I go to my room and I, I, I find where my room is. I sit there and I'm thinking to myself, man, this is going to be the worst week of my life. You know, I'm, I'm here. I can't escape God. I can't escape, you know, hearing about him. You know, what, I, what I'm, I'm like, I just sat there in disbelief. And then out of nowhere, boom, 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 boom. I hear a knock on my door. I hear a knock on my door. And um, I open the door and this guy named Jason, this guy named Jason is there. And he goes, hey, Diego, my name is Jason. You know, I'm, I'm one of your huddle leaders. And um, I just want to come by and say hi just talk to you for a moment. Guys, I never felt so much love from a person. I knew there was something different about this guy right off the bat. <clears throat> you know, I grew up, you know, in New Jersey, hanging out with the wrong crowd, doing the wrong things. I got involved with drugs growing up. You know, I got involved with friends that did things that weren't honoring to God. I made a lot of mistakes, guys. I did a lot of things I'm not proud of. And um, <clears throat> a lot of the friendships that I had back home were always temporary. I felt like most of my friendships were just because people wanted to be friends with me, what I could give to them. It was like selfish friendship, you know? It wasn't real friendships. And so when I met this guy, Jason, I just saw the love of God run through his veins. I just saw the way he talked to me, the way he acted with me, and the way he spent time with me and really was interested in Diego. And he was just so encouraging. And I said to myself, man, this week might be okay after all. You know, like I said, I thought that was going to be the worst week of my life. And so we started doing huddle groups every day. You can go to Next Picture Hazel. Started going to huddle groups every day. Started meeting in groups. I started meeting other young people that wanted to know more about God. They were excited about learning more about God. And they were all talking about the word of God in the Bible. And I'm like, man, I thought the Bible was just for, 
people that were older, you know, people that were, you know, not young like me. I was like, man, these other kids I saw at this camp were so hungry for the Lord. We're so hungry for God. I'm like, man, this is incredible. Like, I didn't know this existed. I thought all, all, all young people cared about was drugs, fame, popularity, you know, getting great, getting, you know, only caring about themselves. And like, here I see these young people, you know, loving God. And I'm just like, man, this is, this is insane. And so we started getting together in huddle groups. We started meeting together. We went to chapel every morning and every night. And that's when I started hearing the gospel for the first time, guys. Remember, the word gospel, it means good news. It means good news. There was this verse that I remember reading, John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. I'll read it. One, I'll say it one more time. For God so loved the world. And I heard that and I said, man, God loves me. God will love someone like me, a person, you know, and I, I was addicted to stealing too. When I was a younger kid, I did drugs. I disobeyed my family. I was rebellious. I was an angry kid. I mean, I, I was, man, I was just, I was a mess. I said, and I heard that verse for God so loved the world. I said, God loves someone like me. And I just couldn't. And I remember, I remember my huddle leader sharing their testimony saying, yes, God loves even someone like you. And I just said, I couldn't believe this. I knew I was a sinner, guys. I knew that I deserved to go to hell. Those were things that weren't a surprise to me. But I did not know that God loved me so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to go to the cross for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever, you hear that, you hear that part in the verse? It says, whosoever. What does that mean? It means anyone. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what kind of, what kind of uh, reputation you've had. You know, in high school, I was known as the pothead for my freshman year in high school. So, you know, Jesus doesn't care about your reputation. He doesn't care about the past. He just wants you to run to him. He wants you to come to him. <clears throat> and so, you know, guys, I so for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him, now it gets even, gets even better, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Meaning that you will, when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you give your life to him, you will not perish. You will have eternal life. Guys, what does that word mean, eternal life? In your, group, in your groups later on when your cab is asked that question, what does eternal life mean? I want you to talk about that in your groups today. I want you to also talk about what does the gospel mean? I want you to talk about why did Jesus die on the cross for me? I want you to talk about all those things today in your groups today, all right, later. But guys, you can go to the next slide, Hazel. <clears throat> the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 3.23, but then in Romans 6.23 it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I mentioned eternal life from the verse that I read, to, I shared with you in John 3.16. And now here it says it again. It's, guys, there's no doubt that all of us have sinned. How many people here have lied before in their life? Raise their hand. And if you haven't raised your hand, then you're lying again. Did you know that? If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying again. How many people here have taken something that's not theirs? How many people here have disobeyed their family? How many people here, you know, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Guys, I broke every rule in the Bible. I broke every single one of them, every single commandment. I'm guilty, guys. I know that. So, guys, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then Romans 6, 23 finishes off saying, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, the first part of Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. That's what we deserve, death, because of our sin. Because all of us have sinned and fallen short. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So guys, <clears throat> the gospel means good news. And the reason why it means good news is because there was bad news. And the bad news is, guys, you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't pay your way to heaven. It doesn't matter how many good things you do because, guys, like I said, we've all done bad things. We've all fallen short. No one here has lived a perfect life, right, except one person, that is Jesus Christ. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. <clears throat> but Jesus Christ left his kingdom. He came to this, 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 this earth, and he went to the, with the purpose of going to that cross and dying for you guys on the cross. Guys, all you have to do to have a relationship with Jesus is place your faith and your trust in Jesus alone and stop placing your faith and trust in yourself. 
Put your trust in Christ. He is our living hope, guys. And if any of you here today haven't made that decision to follow Jesus, do it today. You can go to the next slide, Hazel. Here's some more verses I want to read to you. I don't know if you can, I don't know if it's too small. But it says that at a time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth, Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope. See, when you don't have Jesus, you have no hope and with the world. But now Christ Jesus, who you once were far off, has been brought near by the blood of Christ. Meaning how Jesus died on the cross for you. He shed his blood on that cross for you. And he's given you eternal life. Now Christ is our peace guy. For he himself is our peace who made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the empty, that is, the commandments contained in the ordinances, as to create himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and he might reconcile them both in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, and he has preached peace to you who are far off and those who are near, for those whom we have both access by one spirit and one father. <clears throat> Next slide, Hazel. So guys, July 4th, the year 2000, the best day of my life. Could you, do, do you know what, what happened that day? You know what happened that day, guys? I surrendered my life to Jesus. On July 4th at camp in Cutstown, Pennsylvania, in the middle of nowhere in the boonies, I surrendered my life to Jesus. Best day of my life, guys. And I gave my life to Christ. So guys, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now I want to close with a song. And Hazel is going to put that song on for you guys. And in the song, I'm going to, I'm going to close in prayer in the video. And then, and then Harry or whoever's next, the rest of the time is yours. So I hope you're blessed with this song that me and my best friend Paul sang with sang and uh, enjoy it, guys. And God bless you. And I can't wait to talk more <clears throat> about our living hope in Jesus tomorrow and Thursday as well. So I'll see you guys in a moment. Hey, guys. I'm so excited. I was just able to share my story with you today. I was able to share with you my testimony. And I want to close this time with a song, a uh, song crying out to Jesus, giving Jesus all the glory. And that's what we want to do today here. I have my friend Paul with me playing piano. And guys, join us in singing this song. The letters will be down there, I believe. And um, let's sing a song, just giving thanks to Jesus for changing us and giving us a living home, which is our theme that we're looking at this week. Jesus, 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 there's just something about the name.
arms of Jesus, guys. I've been helped by the Savior. I've been held by the Savior. I felt fire from above. I've been down to the river. And I ain't the same. A prodigal return. All my hope, guys. All oh, my hope is in forgiven and I'm not going back and I'll never be the same sing it loud guys all my hope is in Jesus thank God I yesterday's gone all my sins are forgiven I just want to share some with you. There's hope in Jesus Christ. There's no hope in Diego. There's no hope in this world. There's no hope in governments. There's no hope in man. There's no hope in technology, guys. There's no hope in anything else but Jesus. We have a living hope in Jesus Christ. Give your lives to him, guys. Put your hope in him. He will never fail you. God is faithful forever. Put your hope in Jesus. Put your confidence in Him. Stop putting it in yourself. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. And today is the day that you can give your life to Christ if you haven't done so. Give your life to Him. So guys, let's close in prayer. And ask God to, to save you if you haven't done so before. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this joy of singing this song. Lord, thank you for letting me share my story with my friends here today of how you transformed my life. This story is not about me, Lord. It's about you. It's only about you and how you alone can change lives. Only you alone can transform an individual's life, God. You've changed so many. And there's hope for anyone. It doesn't matter what your past is like. It doesn't matter what you've done. You have hope in Jesus. He wants you to come as you are into his arms. He wants to embrace you. But he also wants you to acknowledge that you're a sinner. So if you want to give your life to him right now, let's just pray together. This prayer does not save you. It's Jesus, but let's pray. Dear Father, I acknowledge I'm a sinner and that I need you. Please save me, Lord. I can't do this without you. I'm broken without you, Lord. I'm, I'm nothing without you, God. And I want to give my life to you today, God. I want to surrender it all. I want to stop fighting. And I want to give it to you, Jesus. Lord, I surrender everything to you. I want to cry out, Master. I want to cry out, my King and my Lord. 
Jesus, save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, friends, it's not the prayer that saves you. It's Jesus. And so tomorrow, I'm excited to keep talking more about stories of hope. Tomorrow, I'm going to share with you about people who've been changed. People whose society thought there was no hope for them. And yet Jesus gave them true hope. Guys, love you. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow.